While I've been in South Africa, I've heard a number of heartbreaking stories, but there is one that struck me on a very personal level. I met Janine on my journey through the Karoo, where I've been listening to some horrific accounts of murder, rape, and robbery. Like many other white farming families, Janine's was torn apart in one of South Africa's daily farm attacks. I sat down to hear her story firsthand. We, we are now third generation on this farm, third generation. My grandfather farmed here um, until he died of a heart attack. And then my dad inherited this portion and his brother inherited the top farm, which my dad eventually over the years bought back. So it's been in the family for more than a hundred years. I grew up here, um, myself and my three siblings grew up here, went to school in Croftnet, which I'm sure you came through, and then went to study in Cape Town. And yeah, it was always our dream to come back. And it was always the intention to come back, not under these circumstances though. My dad was living alone. My mum was in an Alzheimer's home. So this is quite hard. Because we were so safe here, there was actually no handle on the back door. It was always open. And um, this security gate was right here. So my dad heard the knock on the door, opened the door, was shot in the stomach. Managed to get to the phone. Yeah. Phone my aunt. Said I've been shot in the stomach. Put the phone down. Phone our neighbour. And while he was, he said to Jeremy, I've been shot. And while he was on the phone to Jeremy, Jeremy heard the shots. Just kept going. And there was one shot that Rickers showed against that wall. All the time my dad's being shot, back, arms, legs, and my dad slumped over this chair, slumped forward over this chair, and he was shot in the back of the head here, just execution style, in the back of the head. So it was eight, they found eight cartridges, but six, he was shot six times. So this is where my dad died, he was killed. Okay. I know, for what, you know, for what? He was a good man. He was an awesome man. And to shoot somebody six times, execution style. Can I take a breather, please? Of course. You think it gets easier, and it never does. Unfortunately, my dad was, and Louis will back me up, and everybody will back me up. But my dad was the most loving person. He would literally give you the shirt of his back to help you. There were so many farmers, and Louis knows that were battling. That my dad was say, "Yeah, use my back end to get on your feet. Do that, and to cold bloodedly just." So all they took, um, about 20,000 rand in the safe, they took that, helped themselves to food in the fridge, and then hit the road. Janine's story is not especially remarkable nor is it out of the ordinary. What is remarkable is her resilience. Like many of her people, Janine has returned to the farm where her father was killed to rebuild her life in the face of unspeakable horror. He, he's killed two people. He's destroyed two families. And he got 15 years. With these 15 years, he can sit for six, six years and he'll come back. And he'll, he'll probably come and kill us or kill another farm because he knows how easy it is that he's got away with it. So justice hasn't been served yet. These kind of attacks are not uncommon in South Africa. In fact, the statistics show a white farming family is attacked every single day. It's just getting worse and worse and worse. And they're targeting the vulnerable, you know, the 65, Plus, that's who they're targeting. And it is just going to get worse. And then the farmers are going to leave. They're going to have no choice but to leave. On the 
government doing anything about this? No. Nothing. The government have, have done nothing. I haven't heard from a government official. Not once. Not at all. No phone call, nothing. So, what the intention is, it remains a mystery to us. Janine and other families like hers have told me they are not convinced these brutal attacks are just random acts, but that the South African government may very well be complicit in allowing them to happen as they continue their political agenda to drive out white farmers and take their land. With overwhelming agreement, unanimous agreement, has resolved that the expropriation of land without compensation should be amongst the mechanisms available to government to give effect to land reform and redistribution. That is what is important. While watching the crime rates skyrocket against white farmers and the government's rhetoric get more radical, I can only help but wonder how much worse is this going to get in the coming years. Hey guys, this video is just one of the many stories I want to show you from my trip here in South Africa. In fact, when I get back, I plan on working on a longer form documentary about the entire trip. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support that project and other stories being told like this one, or if you'd like to find out about the people in the stories and how you can support them and the farmers of South Africa, please check out the links in the description below. And of course, a big thank you to everyone who has been supporting this trip and been super encouraging to me and this channel. It means the world to me. I'll see you next time.